A brief uh, sermonette today. First of all, a scripture. Uh, the core of the gospel message. It does seem to me that we are a nation divided, but you know, I don't think we're divided over politics. I think it is somehow a moral division. And I think at the heart of that moral division is the decision about whether we are going to be a people of grace or a people of retribution. It should not be a hard choice knowing who our Savior is and what he said to us. Here we have from Matthew these extraordinary words. They seem a little counterintuitive, but in truth, they are the only way to live that really works. You've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. Now he's not saying to let somebody knock your brains out and just stand there and do it. He's saying don't match evil for evil. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And the moment you do that, you have control. You have moral control of the situation. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give him your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also that second mile. Any Roman soldier, the occupying army, could come along and force uh, a, a Jewish person uh, who was the occupied people, could force them to carry a burden one mile. That's as far as the law allowed them to force them to do it. Jesus says, when you've carried it one mile, out of the grace of your heart and as a witness to the God that you serve, you go ahead and carry that burden for them one more mile. And he's really telling them that grace changes things. There's power in grace. There's death in retribution. But there is power in grace. Give to everyone who begs from you. Do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You've heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven, for he makes his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends the blessed rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. If you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles who do not know God, is what he's saying, do the same thing. Everyone can love their own family. Everyone can love their own children. Therefore, be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. Or as Luke says that line, therefore be merciful, even as your heavenly Father is merciful. You know the um, turmoil that I have been in, and it is genuine turmoil, over what's happening to families at the border. It is, um, it is so different from the America that I have known and loved all of my life, the very idea of that we would take children from their parents with no intention of ever giving them back. That's why they're having such trouble working this out now. There was never any intention whatsoever to give those children back. I thought it'd be good for us today to hear another president talk about immigrants. This is from Mr. Ronald Reagan. He was standing in front of the Statue of Liberty as he gave this speech. 
through this golden door under the gaze of that mother of exiles has come millions of men and women who first set foot on America's soil right here, so close to the Statue of Liberty. Those families came here to work, they came to build, others came to America in different ways from other lands under different and often harrowing conditions. For this place symbolizes what they all managed to build. No matter where they came from or how they came or how much they had suffered. They came to America to work. They didn't ask what this country would do for them. They asked what they could do to make this a great nation. This refuge. This greatest home of freedom in history. They brought with them courage and ambition and the values of family, neighborhood, work, peace, and freedom. We all come from different lands, but we share the same values, the same dreams. I want more than anything, he said, to have a country that will, through its actions at home and in the international arena, let millions of people know that Miss Liberty still lifts her lamp beside the golden door. Let us make the message loud and clear, this message that this generation of Americans intend to keep that lamp shining, that this dream, that this dream that is the last best hope of man on earth, this nation under God, shall not perish from this earth. He reflects the words of the great Lincoln there. The president that followed him was talking about service unselfish service, service out of which you get nothing whatsoever. This is from the elder George Bush. You ask about the pursuit of happiness at a good time in my life. I have pursued life itself over many years now and with varying degrees of happiness. Some of my happiness still comes from trying to be, in my own words, a point of light. I believe I was right when I said as president that there can be no definition of a successful life that does not include service to others. So I do that now and I gain happiness. I do not seek a Pulitzer Prize. I do not want press attention. I don't crave sitting at the head table or winning one of the many coveted awards offered by the many organizations across the land. I have found happiness in service. I no longer pursue it, for now I have it. Our greatest president of all on any list is always the remarkable, the extraordinary Abraham Lincoln. He knew the message of grace. He lived that scripture that I read to you. One of the greatest tragedies that ever happened in our nation was his assassination. Had he lived, there would have been no retribution against the South. Would that John Wilkes Booth had known that he was killing the South's best hope. There would have been reconciliation. There would have been a time of recovery. The South didn't know it, but really their best friend, because he was a friend to humankind, because he knew what compassion was all about. Their best friend was sitting in the White House. We do this every year at this time. 
in thanksgiving for our nation. 700,000 men died in the Civil War. Thousands died at Gettysburg. And Lincoln stood on that battlefield and he delivered the Gettysburg Address, as it is known in history. It's not long, but how gracious, how moving, and how powerful it is. score and seven years ago our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that this nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. Dear friends, let us engage in this prayer before our Lord. Lord, we are before you now. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, in our hearts we kneel before you. We confess that we have gone astray. We have not loved you with all of our heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as we love ourselves. We have not treated the neighbor as we want to be treated and in offended the least among us. 
and in offending them, we have offended you. In turning against those, we have turned against you. We have made mothers weep and children cry out in fear. Lord, forgive us and restore us. Remind us again what it means to love. Call us to your cross. Let us be humble before you and seek your mercy. We have sinned, Lord. Forgive us. We have sinned, Lord. Save us by your grace. In this very moment now, let us receive the grace of Christ who loves us and receives us as we are. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. He bids us now rise and sin no more. In the name of Christ, we give thanks. Amen.